Hi and welcome to this nesting and fabrication tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating and editing your nests. And to do so, we need to head over to the fabrication tab within the manufacturer workspace. And there's a couple of prerequisites. The first is to make sure that your nest preparation is complete, which can be found in the design workspace. You also need to make sure your material library is properly set up, as well as looking over your component sources to make sure you've got the right components, quantities, and nest properties. There's separate videos on each aspect of that process, so if you haven't watched them first, go check them out. But in this video, we're going to look at creating and editing a nest study. To do so, you're going to want to click the second icon in the ribbon, Create Nest Study. Upon opening this dialog, there's a couple of things that you should see. Firstly, you should see we've got this nest study node and then one nest node for each material and thickness you have within the project. Now let's take a look at the dialog itself and you'll see it's split up into five tabs. Which should be a familiar look if you've ever created any toolpaths with inside manufacture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through these tab by tab. And the first tab is where you're going to set the job quantity. You can think of this as assembly quantity and in effect, it's a multiplier. So remember back in component sources, we set the quantity of each part. This job quantity is multiplied by each part quantity, giving you a total number of each shape. The job quantity can be either set as a single value or can be set as a multi-value, where you choose a job quantity for each source assembly. In this case, we have three sources, the rack itself, as well as two different cases. So for this particular study, we only need one rack. We're going to go ahead and enter a quantity of two for each audio case. Stack size can be used to define the number of sheets that are stacked together before performing a cut. So if I had a stack size of three for each shape I cut, I'm going to get three of that shape. That's going to reduce the number of separate sheets and significantly reduce the machining time. Next, let's move over to shape. This is going to be a list of each shape that you're going to pass to this particular nest study. This should replicate the lists shown in component sources. I can choose to deselect any of these source shapes, and that will simply exclude them from this particular nest study. By hovering over the source file itself, you can see a preview of the nestable shape. This is going to help you identify the source files. Down here at the bottom, I can see how many total shapes are selected. In the table itself, we have some information about material, thickness, and overall dimensions. From there, let's check out our packaging. As you can see, all of our default packaging has automatically been added to this study. That's the list at the top. And then the list at the bottom is going to be all the available packaging that we could use in this study. Notice we have a couple of extras, a smaller aluminium sheet, as well as a larger FR4 sheet. To add a material to this study, simply double click, and that will add it to the list. To remove a material from the study, right click and delete. You can choose to have multiple packagings from the same material in a single study. For example, I could have both FR4 packaging options, a 600 millimeter sheet, as well as a thousand millimeter sheet. And the way in which the algorithm chooses which packaging to use can be determined by the packaging usage method dropdown, which is displayed at the bottom of the dialog. The options are best mix, best size, and as listed. So as listed is going to choose the material in order. So in this case, my 600 millimeter sheet is above the thousand. So it's going to use the 600 millimeters until we run out of sheets. In this case, my inventory is set to infinite, so it will never actually use the 1000mm FR4 sheet. To reorder, I can simply select a sheet and use the arrows. In this configuration, it will use the 1000mm sheet until it runs out of inventory. Again, in this case, it's set to infinite, so it will never actually use the 600mm sheet. Alternatively, I can set the packaging usage method to best size. That's going to look at all the shapes that will be applied to that material and choose the best size for all sheets. So you'll end up with one sheet size that fits all sheets and maximizes both cost and efficiency. The last option is best mix. 
This will choose whichever sheet provides the most efficient and the most cost effective option on a sheet by sheet basis. Once you're happy with your packaging options, we can head over to global parameters. This is where you're going to find all the settings, a couple to point out, corner position. That's going to allow you to control which corner the nest calculation starts from. To maximize efficiency on your machine, it's best to choose the corner that's closest to the home position of the machine. That's going to minimize machine travel. Next, let's talk about remnant optimization. And we have the option to either minimize length and width, which will force all the shapes into the corner. We can choose to minimize the width, which will minimize the width of the parts on the sheets, or we can minimize the length. In this particular case, I want to minimize both length and width. And we can move on to the output tab. A couple of options to discuss here. Firstly, the create manufacturing model option is required if you want to create your tool paths within Fusion 360. If you're just looking to output DXFs, you're going to want to deselect this create manufacturing model option. And lastly, include stock. With this selected, that's going to create a solid body within each sheet labeled as stock that can be used to define your stock when you create your setups. With that, let's go ahead and press OK. and take a look at our nested outcome. So as you can see from the tree, we now have each individual sheet created as a manufacturing model. Let's go ahead and look at one in a little bit more detail. A couple of things to point out. Firstly, you can see that we've got a stock representation body. That's because we selected that include stock option. And you see this blue sketch? That's what we're calling a remnant cut. That's just a simple sketch that's been added to the manufacturing model that can be used to drive the tool to create clean remnants. Within my browser structure, you can see that it's organized just like any other manufacturing model with bodies, sketches, and each component. Now let's go ahead and run that exact same nest study, but this time, let's not create manufacturing models. So let's go ahead and create a nest study, use the same settings that we did before. So one rack and two of each case. And on the output tab, Let's deselect create manufacturing model and OK. At this point, I'm just going to hide nest study 6 so we can clearly see nest study 7. As you can see, by selecting each sheet, I don't get a preview. Because, like I said before, by deselecting create manufacturing model, you're not actually wanting to create toolpaths. Maybe your machine can accept DXFs directly. If for whatever reason I want to create a manufacturing model, I can do so by right clicking a sheet and press show items. And there's my manufacturing model. If at any point I want to edit a nest study, I can do so by right clicking and selecting edit nest study. And I'm presented with the same dialog that I used to create it. So I might want to edit a shape or change in a packaging option. Alternatively, I can choose to edit an individual nest, which remember is a container for a single material and thickness. To do that, go ahead and right click and press edit nest. Any changes you make here are only for this particular nest and won't affect any of the other nests in the nest study or any of the other nest studies. It's a similar looking dialog to the edit nest study. So I can choose shapes. But I also have some control over things like orientation and rotational constraints. Right now, these are all grayed out because they're bound to the material. By deselecting that bound, I now have editing capabilities of those options. I can also preview the packaging and make packaging adjustments for a single material, as well as changing any global parameters, including frame width and item separation. And remember, Anything that you change in the edit nest dialog will only affect this one nest, which is a single material and a single thickness. Let's go ahead and create one final nest study. This time for the job quantity, let's use a single value and set it to three. So we're having three of each source, three racks, three of case one and three of case two. I want to include all my shapes, all my packaging options, and I'm going to choose best mix and let Fusion 360 decide 
which packaging option is best suited for this particular design. Global parameters, I'm happy with the default. And I do want to create manufacturing models for each sheet. Let's go ahead and take a look at the output. One last thing to point out is that you can see from the browser that each particular sheet has a quantity label. In this particular instance, all of my quantities are set to one, but often these can be set to two, three or more. And that just signifies you'll need to cut that particular sheet more than once. Thanks for listening to the nesting and fabrication tutorial video on how to create and edit nest studies. Please check out the other videos in this series for more information on the material library and component sources. Thanks for watching.